Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems and today's system is from the user Kerbal in Discord so massive thank you to them for sending their simulation. And without further ado guys, let's hop straight into this. So their system is called the Coers system, hope I'm saying that right. Uh, we're in update 33 specially for this one as well. So without further ado, let's see what we got here. Right, straight in, very fast, okay. Right. Let's see what we have got here. So, version 33. We are in 33. We can verify that at the bottom there. 33.0.02. So, here we go. So, Kuwais is an extremely small and cold red dwarf in several parameters comparable to Trappist-1. Go by temperature of 2520 Kelvin. That's actually really, really dim. Its spectral class would be around M8V, although the mass and size seem to be more typical of an even smaller red dwarf that managed to reach the L classification. So, it's barely massive enough to sustain hydrogen fusion. So, I mean, it's almost a brown dwarf at this point. <laughs> it's barely there. Um, 2,880 times dimmer than that of our sun, putting its hatchable zone about 3 million kilometres or a 5-day orbit and making the star invisible to the naked eye within a single light year. Oh, wowee. Its age is about 7.5 billion years, which, considering its slow rotation, might have been enough for, it, for its flare activity to greatly decline. Okay, there you go. Look at those stats. So, if we look at the zone, that's a small zone, isn't it? There you go, there's a whole system around him, so... There you are. Alright, okay. First of the planets. Oh, well, one notable thing is that can be said about the whole system. It's mainly planets are having a 2 to 1 orbital resonance with the planets after them. Okay. Oh, and the coastlines look squarish or the sea's bumpy. I recommend to press settle water. Okay. Right. Lovely. Right, so first up we've got Heria here. There you go. Very small planet, similar to Sol Ceres, in fact. Um, it would have been considered a dwarf planet if it had other notable objects in its orbit. It orbits in less than 12 hours and is less than 700,000 kilometers from the star's surface. But it is apparently still not enough to make this planet have a glow in hot areas. Although an interesting thing about its temperature is that the dark side also heated up significantly. The planet is also losing material to solar wind, which I turned off, but I say in the fragment stuff. Okay. Next up, we have got this one, Might Bay. This planet is known to be larger than the previous, but still quite small. Smaller than our moon. It's tightly locked and is in an, or an orbit of just under one Earth day. It is similar in colour to the previous one, but is significantly darker. The bright round spots you see are volcanoes, not craters. Okay, there you go. Next up we've got Carico. A desert planet is significantly smaller than Earth. It has several small lakes in which life might have developed. There you go. Some of the lakes in the northern hemisphere happen to look like a face. I guess you can see a face in there. Um, although due to the game's issues, you might need to play around. Ah, I think it looks alright, actually. Um, yeah, the planet's atmosphere is pretty thin, so on equator, water can sometimes evaporate at relatively modest temperatures. The spin orbit resonance on is about 5 to 4. Okay. Next up, we're here. Sam Harry. A temperature ocean at world... Oh, you can see there is an ocean, yeah. Um, slightly bigger than Earth, with the purplish tint of an ocean being caused by thriving microorganisms. Most of the land is small islands, but several bigger ones are present too, mainly near the southern pole. The uh, atmosphere is Earth-like, although slightly thinner. The spin orbit resonance is 3 to 2. Alrighty. Next up, we've got Lesan here. This large 60 km in diameter asteroid managed to slip in the inner solar system and threatens to cause immense destruction on some area. Well, not on a collision course yet, it already approaches close to 200,000 kilometers. Oh, oh, oh. Then we've also got 8 Gore here. A grey crater sub Earth with a thin atmosphere. Its spin orbit and orbital with some hairy resonates uh, 3 to 2. Next up, we have got uh, Kaisha Kai here. That's a tidy lot, guy. You can see only the front face is melted. Pretty cool. An eyeball world slightly larger than Earth. It's the last tidy lock planet which allows its day to heat up enough to create liquid water on the surface while the rest is covered on ice. Nice. I like that. That's cool. It's got a little moon as well. The only moon in the inner system. An asteroid with a reddish tint. The game originally wanted to give it a density of minus 3 uh, centimeters cubed, which is very low among solid objects. It's only comparable to moons embedded in Saturn's rings. So I had to change it a bit. Okay. Which is still slightly more massive comparable to the moons of Mars, which are already pretty small. There you are. All right. I like that tidy lock one. That's pretty cool. Next up, we've got the asteroid belt. So there's a hidden asteroid belt somewhere. I don't think I can even see it. Is it? Is it there? I don't see any particles showing up. I'm not sure if it's there. Simple asteroid belt between rocky planets and gas giants. Okay, so it's pretty basic then. 
So it should be here somewhere, but I can't see any particles getting picked up. So I'm not entirely sure. Must be disabled. So there you go. Next up, we've got. Um, now, what's this one? This is Casaline. Do we do that one? Um. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Casaline. Very small, but still round dwarf planet. Seems to have quite a rough surface. Okay, there you go. This next one, I have no idea how to say that. Uh, rounded object, more than on more than inclined orbit than most others in the size in the region. Lovely. Then we've got Darashi and Dorali. Dari. Fairly large, almost around an asteroid with a quite sizable satellite. Nice. There it is there. Very large rounded satellite with a quite sizable satellite. Okay, yeah, yeah, there it is. Alright, cool. So next up we've got uh Jakora. So the bigger the planets now. Okay, here we go. It's like a pretty big deal. Right. The largest and most massive planet in the system, although uh, uh, although only an eye shine in scale in comparison, its appearance is a Saturn-like beige with an interesting feature is visible. A pair of northern hemisphere or a saturated orange band contrasts in a very pale one. You can see it up there. You can see the pale band. Okay. Lovely. Okay. Um, it has some moons as well. A bunch of asteroids. You can check them out. They're all customized. So have a quick peek at them all here. There you go. There's the asteroids. Nice. Next up, we got Swan over here. The second largest planet. Uh, Coloured in more Jupiter light bands of yellow, orange, and reddish, all low in pastel shades. It is at the right distance for its moons to experience eclipses, uh, specifically annual eclipses with high coverage. While many objects in this system are on the same plane and often pass in front of each other, the eclipses feel more unique. Okay, nice. We look at the star from here, it's pretty, uh, it's looking pretty small now. Alright, there you go. So it's got some minor moons as well. Here they are. Uninteresting. And then it's also got a little larger moon here. Small but round icy moon, likely the best spot for viewing eclipses. Plus this orbit can further lessen angelic size difference between uh, the other moons. Uh, surface has cracks, suggesting activity in the subsurface ocean. Although discoloured surface and craters suggest low activity, at least at recent times. Cool, alright. There you go. There's the other ones. Yeah, we'll just asteroid ones. Alright. Next up we've got Adesani. Icy super earth that didn't gather much gas. Its moderate atmosphere consists of what could have turned into a proper ice giant. So it's got moons. One moon is dark and bluish. The other is a bit red and brighter and red, which is that one. Alright. So we're heading to this object next. Hanasi. Relatively large and dark center light body with fast rotation. So that rotates very fast. 0 0.5 days spin that little asteroid thing. Right, next up, we're heading to Nara Kossi over here. Alright, okay. Most dense of the gas planets and one of the smaller ones. Its atmosphere is near uniform orange due to titanic -like organic hazes. It also, has a, it also has a rather high axle tilt at over 40 degrees Celsius. Okay. Or 40, 40 degrees, I say. What am I saying Celsius? 40 degrees tilt. <laughs> Theory me, you're losing the plot there. Anyways, uh, next up we've got this little asteroid. Dark asteroid, very low density. Other smaller inner moons like exist, but are not shown. Okay. Nice. We've got uh, Swadnin over here. Small icy moon, bright surface and lonely mountains paired with what seems to be smooth plain suggests active cryovolcanism. And then we've got another moon over here, Asari. Fairly large moon. Mainly compared to its close orbit, it is in a 3 2 orbital resonance with uh, Sweden, hopefully keeping its orbit stable. It also has a thin but visible atmosphere, possibly related to its moon's apparent geological activity. It also has a 4 to 3 spin orbit resonance. And it's also got some irregular moons, it consists of two groups eccentric prograde and inclined retrograde. So there's a few more. So all of these guys here, basically. So the inclined retrograde, all going all over the place, effectively, there. Okay. Alright, next up we have got the Yacht, which is this guy. It's getting pretty dark over here now. There's the true colour on the uh, side there. This is an ice giant orbiting well over an Earth year and having a temperature of 230 degrees Celsius. Minus 230. Uh, it's mostly clear bluish with some cl uh, cold clouds and materials like nitrogen, carbon monoxide. Nice. We've got a uh, Kalek here. 
roughly medium sized icy moon coloured in brown patches due to organic compounds. Its surface has some huge cliffs and cracks, roughly similar to Miranda, but likely different origin mechanism. Then we've got Gylo over here. Pretty large, almost rounded, captured object with low density, typical of medium sized porous outer belt objects. Okay, there you go. Great. Then we've got this one here. I'm not even going to try and say how you meant to pronounce that. But there it is. To me, the name isn't as hard to say as it looks at first glance. I guess something that could help is split it into two. Y yeah. <sighs> However you say that. This uh, one is a small icy planet with very red surface, coloured by organic compound. Uh, one thing noticeable about its surface is the presence of several large mountains like the Krav Volcanoes, one of them which comparable to Mars, Olympus, Mons in land size. It also orbits in a noticeably more inclined and eccentric orbit than other planets and is 3 to 2 resonance with Yat. There's its moons. There you go. And then lastly, one more object. This guy over here. Hazo Karat. Complete darkness, the most distant planet with even more inclined orbit. It appears near uniform ice giant blue with a single band of neon, the element clouds. Uh, it has quite low mass and density, 1.5 Earth masses and 2.7 Earth radius, making it the least dense planet. There you go, it's 1.85 mass. Righty, there you go. And that is it around this little red dwarf. So how far actually away is this guy? So it's an 8 year orbit, so you're looking at what? Ah, Jupiter, Jupiter distance there. Oh, orbital period, eight years. Yeah, okay. Eight years, really? At 1.74 AU. Okay. All right, there it is, but I'm good. It rotates pretty quick. So that is the lineup for the Kauai system. So very small little red dwarf, isn't he? There you go. I really like that one with the, uh, the tidy locked, the eye one. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. All frozen and then all liquid. Seriously, nice indeedy. But there we are. So that does it for this system, everyone. So if you enjoyed it, hope you um, leave a like. Let's see if we can go for 100 likes on this video as well, guys. Help us on the journey to 40,000 subscribers as we are nearer and nearer by the day. Really appreciate all your support. And again, a massive thank you to the creator of this system, Kerbal, for sending their simulation. With that, I'll send on, everybody. Make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.